just to conclude, uh, Jay just finished 15 years pastoring at the Columbus uh, Church in outside of Billings, and so now he's making the rounds and visiting all the churches, and we're so glad to have you, Jay. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring you greetings from your sister churches throughout our four-state region. That's right, you have a sister. 30 of them, as a matter of fact, 8,700 people gathering this morning to worship God on Mother's Day to bring praises to His name. It's more about Him than it is about us, and you are not alone. And so you're part of this larger body called the Western Conference, and it is my honor to be here once again today. She was the most beautiful woman I had ever laid my eyes upon. In spite of the wheelchair she lived in for 23 years of her life. This is my Mother's Day story, told every year for the past 28 in honor of my mother, and a story one day she hoped would be told to bring glory to God. And so today we say, Happy Mother's Day. They wanted to have six children, but ended up having seven, because the last pregnancy was twins. All seven of those kids were under the age of 11. And for all you parents out there, can you imagine having enough energy for seven kids, all under the age of 11, especially if the last two were twins? From what I have been told, when the twins were just six months old, Mom was holding the twins proudly with the girl twin in this arm and the boy twin in this arm. Suddenly, her world changed forever. And one arm went totally numb, and she dropped the boy twin to the ground on his head, who just so happened to be me. <laughs> that's why many people say I am the way I am today. At least that's my excuse. Her body quickly deteriorated from that point on. She was losing control over her muscles and had to walk with a cane just to stay upright. Things progressed downward from there rapidly to a two-handed walker that you see so many people having today. Eventually, she ended up permanently sitting in a wheelchair and being confined to a hospital bed in our front living room in front of the giant picture window of our home. This is a picture of my mom's first grandbaby sitting on her lap. That's our giant picture window, the streets of Denver, just behind uh, out there. And uh, we come from a long line of thumb suckers, I believe. <laughs> the only muscles in her body that seemed to work were a few in her neck, a couple more for chewing and swallowing, and also those muscles that allowed her to blink her eyes. She could barely talk. But us kids learned to read her lips for what she wanted to say. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good, for those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. You've heard this scripture before. This is a scripture my mother claimed as her life verse after coming down with this disease. Diagnosed incorrectly with a disease called multiple sclerosis, every facet of her life's foundation was going to be shaken. Many questions arose in her mind. How can I be a mother to my children? What kind of wife will I be to my husband? Will I be alive to see my kids graduate from high school, or to get married. However, one question I never heard her ask was, why me? Several different times that I can remember, the doctors had the family, including us kids, gather around her bedside. Back in those days, doctors did house calls. 
And a doctor would gather us together and say to us kids, say goodbye to your mom. She will not survive the night. She'd wake up the next morning and survive, and we go a couple more years and do the whole thing over again. Please do not feel pity for her or for us as her family because her new life was just beginning and God had a glorious plan. Early on, she decided she would make the best of her situation. She honestly believed that these words from Romans 8.28 would hold true for her. I think today about the petty things that get me down, and I am ashamed. I have my health, my own children, a beautiful wife, a job that pays all our needs, How easy it is to forget that God will take care of us, even beyond our wildest dreams. What are you dealing with today that you need to be reminded that God will take care of for you? Having a mom in a wheelchair was easy for me as a kid. It was the only thing I ever knew. I thought everyone else's mom was a little bit weird for walking around like that. I don't feel the slighted in the least bit for her situation. Like I said, she was my mom, and I was not ashamed of her. Even though she was a quadriplegic, there was no doubt who was running our household. Though she never stepped a foot in our rooms, she knew every detail of things that went on in our home just through her sense of hearing. Even to the point... When I would lose my basketball shoes, yell out, where's my shoes, mom? She'd go, they're in your room. (laughs) They're in your room. And she was right every single time. One of the most remarkable challenges for her was that despite all the morphine she took for all her pain, despite the muscle spasms that attacked her legs and bounced her out of her hospital bed onto the living room floor, Despite the fact that she could not hold her own children, she decided laughter was going to be a part of our home. And as children, we played the meanest tricks on her. And she loved every minute of it. We would place her hand on top of her head for like an hour and leave it there. And she'd just smile and smile and smile. I remember picking her nose with her own finger and she just giggled and giggled because that is the way she played with her own children. Her limited smile lit up an entire room, helping others to forget their own problems in comparison to hers. I understand that 80% of marriages in this type of situation, end in a divorce. My dad chose to stay faithful. Once my dad was putting mom in the car, wheeled the wheelchair down the ramp in our driveway, got next to the car and started to lift mom into the car, but got distracted by us seven kids in our station wagon. Mom rolled backwards down the driveway of our Denver home until she crossed the sidewalk, hit the curb, and s- which separated her from her wheelchair and catapulted her into the street. I can still see her lying out there in my eyes, cars going by. And when my dad got to her, he rolled her over. She was bloody and bruised, and she was laughing. That was mom. I think my dad added to her laughter by saying, you're just lucky we have good health insurance. Now, our home wasn't perfect by any means. Christian homes are not perfect. Let me repeat that. Christian homes are not perfect. We just happen to be forgiven. Our lives are not supposed to be without trials, and God never promised us such a thing. He just promises that nothing will happen to us that we cannot get through when we rely on Him. 
even the most hopeless of situations. Proverbs 1.8 says to all of us, Listen to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. 28 years ago, she went to heaven. And I try and remember this verse often for what mom taught me from her wheelchair and hospital bed. As a child, when I misbehaved, mom obviously could not spank me. She would tell me to sit on her lap. And she would simply say, lean over. And then she would lightly nibble my earlobe. That was her spanking. It didn't hurt. But just like God's love for us, she would say, I love you enough to teach you to do what is right, even though it might hurt a little. I often wondered what she would have done if I would have said, no, I'm not sitting on your lap. But I never tried it because I respected her way too much. When I was older, obviously she didn't nibble my ear anymore. She just said, wait till your dad gets home. (laughs) Maybe you remember those words in your house. I'm convinced children learn more by what we do than what we say. Many times, children have a picture in their mind about what God is like because they compare God to their parents. This should serve as a good reminder for us all. Be godly parents. Mom sat in a wheelchair at nearly every ball game I ever participated in. It meant the world to me. Mom could do little else but pray, so pray she did. And she decided that would be her ministry, just like every one of you need a ministry. Mom prayed for her kids, she prayed for her marriage, prayed for her church, prayed for every person that walked by that giant picture window in front of our home. She prayed so much that as a child, I walked into the living room on occasion with her lying in her hospital bed, and I could actually feel the presence of God. My twin sister would say to me, what is it about out there? I'd say, Mom is praying again. Prayer chains called from all over the country and asked my mom to pray. And as far as I know, she prayed more for others than she prayed for herself. But God had a sweet surprise for her. Into our home one day walked a physical therapist. Now the physical therapists that you hate the most are the ones who are doing the best job. And this physical therapist had served in the Vietnam conflict with amputees and paraplegics and quadriplegics of all kinds. And he said to my mom, how would you like to walk again? And my mom just giggled. (laughs) You see, she had been taught that many times before. If she would have just had enough faith, you could get up out of that wheelchair and walk. Well, she had faith like no other woman I've ever known in my life. And I had not seen a step since the day she was confined. But he said, oh no, I'm serious. You're not going to play football, but I think I could get you to walk again. And I was a freshman in high school when this occurred, about six feet four inches tall, the perfect height to stand behind my mother, lock her knees into place, and hold her underneath her armpits. And this physical therapist taught her to take muscular steps this big, one step at a time. So I'd lean her to the right, and she'd kick that foot. And I'd lean her to the left, and she'd kick the other foot. Perhaps walking maybe only 10 feet. But it could as very well have been a marathon.
God is a God of miracles. He knows exactly what we need. He rewarded my mom for her faithfulness. And I'll never forget those cherished times as a kid of taking my mom for a walk. Proverbs 31 says, She watches over the affairs of her household, does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. I challenge each of you to go home and read Proverbs 31, men and women alike, starting at verse 10. It's an amazing chapter about women. All you fathers out there, read Proverbs 31 as well. And see if you could possibly live up to what God is asking women to do. I don't think men can live up to half of what that chapter says. But I do think my mom lived up to it. God used her life as a light for him like no other. Besides praying, she had a ministry as well. You see, we had to have live-in, around-the-clock help for mom when dad was at work and us kids were at school mom could not stay home alone so we hired single women down on their luck some of which were unwed mothers and had them live in our basement in our home in the span of 23 years we had over 50 single women live with us and without preaching a single word to any of them my mom witnessed to them daily about a life worth living. Her example was enough for God to reach the heart of many of these women. And I recall many of them crossing the line of faith, becoming Christians because of the example of my mom. Motherhood is a divine calling from God. Mom used to say to me, you don't need a test to become a parent. Maybe like getting your driver's license where you have to go down and take a test. But for being a mother, no diploma is issued. No graduation ceremony is held. Simply put, motherhood is a gift and a call from God. Mom had friends who could not have their own children. And every year I travel, I want to be very aware of those who do not have children of their own. But my mom's friends, who were childless, adopted somebody else's. Adoption is the same gift and call from God. Even if someone was, does not want to adopt a child permanently, they can take a child underneath their wings and assist that child's parents in bringing up that child. I had dozens of surrogate mothers. Some of them packed me extra lunches while at school. Others took me to museums and, and, and helped me learn how to tie my own shoes. We could not make it as children without our Sunday school teachers, our neighbors, our coaches, and our friends. It's as though we were adopted out to people with all kinds of gifts. And your congregation is no different than any other. Ephesians 6, 1 says, Children... Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. What a glorious verse. Eight different times the Bible mentions the powerful words, honor your father and mother. Then Ephesians gives us the reminder that we will be rewarded because of it. In fact, it's a promise. And what a great promise. I have not been a perfect child, nor have any of you. Nor will my 18-year-old drug-addicted son, who will be here today, second service, who has rebelled from being a pastor's kid, has gone his own direction, been arrested five times, been jailed three times. And what's a mother to do 
with a child like that? Well, as a mother does, she never gives up. And she takes a boy like that to God's feet on every occasion. And though it's not a guarantee that our son will graduate 10 days from now, nor is it a, a guarantee that he will survive his court case for the felonies that are against him in June, nor is it a guarantee that he will walk with Jesus again someday. We claim hold to the promises that I have espoused to you today. And today we get our chance to practice on a son who is no different than being confined to a wheelchair. And you get the choices as well. Please stand for a minute if you would. While you're standing, I'm going to sit down and ask you the simple question, what could you do today to honor your mother, regardless if your mom is alive or not? What's the honorable thing that you could do for mom today? And let this metal wheelchair that I'm sitting in be a symbol for us all. It's not something negative, like the Lou Gehrig's disease that doctors finally confirmed 23 years later upon my mother's passing. This wheelchair is a symbol of God's love for each one of us. Because just weeks before my mother passed, she whispered into my ear, this is the best thing that ever happened to us. This wheelchair is a symbol of God's unfailing love for each of us. And when we turn our lives over to God, He can help us overcome any challenge that comes our way. Let my mom's life be an example for you of overcoming whatever adversity you face. You have challenges in your life, so do I. And we always will. But let this last story encourage you. As a child, when times were the toughest for our family, Mom always said the same exact thing to me. Before leaving the room to go to bed, on my first day of kindergarten, before we played in the state high school basketball championship, before going to middle school, before graduating from high school, when I left the house to go to college, she said these same short seven words whispered out loud. Up to the very last day, I ever saw her healthy 23 years after God reached out. She said to me the same thing. It's what I want to leave you with today. It's kind of my Mother's Day present to you all. Her words that changed my life forever. Jesus loves you, and so do I. And as you leave here in a little bit today, please be reminded of those powerful words. Say them to the mother of your family. Say them to every member of your family. Say them to your friends, your friends' children, your co-workers. Jesus loves you, and so do I. You may be seated.